This is a clip from the Canon Podcast. To hear the full episode and get access to exclusive benefits, head over to patreon.com forward slash the Canon Pod and sign up for just £3 a month. But uh, we talk about uh, attacking midfielders. There is uh, a lot of rumours regarding Emil Smith Rowe and Chelsea. Surprise. Um, I, I thought it was a bit of a joke initially and then out of nowhere, some actual reporters started reporting it. And then there was another report uh, or a rumour on Twitter that said uh, Chelsea had inquired about a Mudrick and Smith Rowe swap deal. So, George, um, Emil Smith Rowe to Chelsea, talk to me. Um never happening in my opinion um why because i said so um no i i think that you know for equal amount of rumors that have happened you know i think there's also been equal amount of people shutting it down um i can see why chelsea love emile smith row I'll, I'll talk on that because they're missing somebody that's a between the line player that can receive that can provide goals from midfield and also provide a running action to get their other forwards involved like from a Chelsea perspective it makes perfect sense by the way in terms of wanting another number 10 they've got Carney who just got an MCL of course and Kunku's out as well like they need somebody in that role that's why they kind of offered um you know they're shopping around rather for for other interiors so I understand from Chelsea's perspective what I don't understand is from Arsenal's perspective and we kind of touched on it a little bit earlier in the pod when we talked about how creativity has to be done in different ways and for one thing as much as I've praised Fabio Vieira for offering a unique quality I still challenge and I'll probably throw it back to you guys is there somebody in the team bar what we know about injury and having him not involved because there's been plenty of people that have been frozen out that have deserved minutes but is there somebody in the team that carries Emil Smith Rowe's ability to change the tempo of a game and what I mean by that in terms of a gas pedal I like to call it accelerating the tempo of play I don't find that this team has enough accelerators in terms of the possession that we have in the team. And there's very few players that do, but I really don't think that we have the same central running power from others in the squad that can turn and accelerate in the way that Emile Smith-Rowe can. And for that reason, he carries a unique aspect in the team. And that's never something that I am willing to sell. Um, I will never be willing to sell it, especially when I know it's met with final action. Like, Emile Smith-Rowe is not one of these players that we have to theorize what he could be, by the way. I know we haven't seen him in a while, but guys, he showed us his potential, and he showed us his potential in this team. So I really struggle to believe that Mikel has convinced this player to stay and said that you have a role, but then backtrack two to three months later. Like, that doesn't make sense to me. Um, either so if there was if there was a case of him just falling out of favor completely I would have imagined that this many times that Emile Smith Rowe has carried interest from Villa from Chelsea from multiple people that keep saying that he's rumored to go away why has it never progressed and that's the only question that I'll probably ask in combination with he's unique enough in the squad to deserve a place and he's done it in the past Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think he is unique enough and I think there's space for him in the first team. Right? The only thing I say is when he has come on in certain games, there's not been as much an impact at times. You know, He's been a, a bit passive at times, a bit safe. And maybe it's down to lack of confidence in his own actions and the injury, reco- re- you know, recovering from that type of stuff. But we haven't seen the Smith we saw back in 2021 where he was very aggressive, making things happen, taking a shot, you know, making things, you know, taking it you know, properly to, to the opposition team. The Euros team. saw it, now what we're ironically, is, this summer. Yeah, the Euros... <laughs> But with that being the other 21s, fans are always going to kind of be like, oh, you know, do it at the actual Arsenal level. But also, I don't think he started a single game since his injury, yep. which is crazy because that's been a long time. I don't think even a, can't even think about a Europa League game at this point. So with that kept in mind, I don't, I can see why he might be a bit more passive. I'm not confident because he's not played for so long. Um, but there's clearly something blocking his pathway into the first team. Is it Erdegaard or is it Havertz? You know, there's players in his pathway that Arteta just wants to play over Smith Rowe. So Alex, in terms of Smith Rowe, if we do end up keeping him, what would you do in, in a sense of how does he break into this first team? Where would he play? What is his best role? I think right now he's a finisher. I think the the problem is, I mean, blocking is the is the word. When you when you think about Smith Rowe and George's bingo is obviously the central running power thing, right? <laughs> and you think about him in, in combination around the box. And I think about him, like my you almost have a an image of a player in your mind. So for me with Saka, it's like cutting on his left and hitting it you know, into the in that bottom corner against United and Forest and whatever. With Smith Rowe, mine is driving up that inside left channel and shooting or playing a final action. Where is that space? I don't mean, I mean, literally on the field. Where is that space right now? 
more and more teams are sitting further and further deep against Arsenal, right? That reduces the capacity to have that central running power, which is his biggest asset. It reduces his ability to change the tempo of the game, which is one of his biggest assets. So when you're starting a game and you're anticipating how a team is going to play and you're saying, what do we need on the pitch in order to to find solutions to that? Smith Rose just dropped down the pecking order in terms of how how we how we find solutions in a game. That doesn't mean that he's not a good player or has no quality. It just means that Arsenal are playing different types of games. They're being asked different questions by defences. And Smith Rowe's qualities are less desirable in that position. That's not to say he's a bad player. For, let's say, a, like a Tottenham this year, he'd be perfect because they have like enough of the ball and teams aren't sitting as deep. And he thrived. Madison, Kulisevsky, Son or whatever, he'd look great. If Tottenham then get to the top of the league, I think he'd start to fall back again. So I think he needs to find a new dynamic to his game. And I don't know how that works. That's that's on the coaches to find. I, I don't have that. But that's my read on on, on why that situation is occurring. Yeah, I don't know about the whole Mudge groomer, but that would be a bit crazy. And uh, listen, a few days what? after the window, I don't see it happening Mate. personally. Crazy things have happened. Crazy, crazy things, things have happened. happened. Um, but, you know, yeah, I, I think if ESL went Chelsea, our fans would actually lose the plot, especially with Havertz and him not hitting the ground straight away as well. But Thanks for checking out the Canon Podcast. To get full episodes and access to exclusive benefits, head over to patreon.com forward slash the Canon Pod and sign up for just £3 a month.